Howdy, folks. Welcome to Retsu Talk, episode 26. I have a very special guest with me. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Slow Beef. Nice to be here. I'm just going to try to hype up each episode beforehand. Okay, sounds good. Just to kind of you know, get us into it, uh, even if you're not a very special guest. Well, uh -huh. Well, I mean, you're a ser it's a series regular kind uh, of thing. Well, yeah. But if I say special guest, then people might be like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and you mean like we might get more hits on the podcast from people already listening to yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Right, yeah. Like they're going to hear special guest and then they'll stop and tell all of their friends. Right, they'll just be like, you'll never believe this! There's a special guest on the Rights to Talk podcast, eh? You know this podcast you've never heard of? Well, they got a special guest! Sign me up! Bam, number one video games podcast. Boom. Fuck video games, we're taking down NPR. <laughs> yeah. Not just video games, games and hobbies. That's right, wow. We're going for the gold. Yeah, I guess so. Because I, I think that's... Because we're under the... Video games is under the umbrella of games and hobbies. Sure. On the iTunes. This is really interesting, yeah. but you know what's even more yeah. interesting? Yeah? Miko's Cooking Mama Let's Play. Well, let's just get into it. You've got Let's Plays to dish on. I do. Um, and by that I mean this one. Uh, one. No, actually, I, I tweeted about this. I thought this was a really cool concept. He's only one, eight, one update in, but I like the concept that much. Um, you know the game Cooking Mama? I've heard of it, yeah. You know you've played it. Oh, okay. I've played it. But um, no, it's like a little cooking... I can't call it a tutorial game. It's like a series of mini-games, but it, it's really got fuck all to do with actual cooking. Um, but Miko is doing a thing where he's combining the Goons with Spoons forum on something awful with the Let's Play forum, and basically after each recipe he makes in-game, he then makes it in real life in his kitchen, and, like, his friend and he, like, talk over how to make it and, you know, crack-wise and shit like that. And then Gordon Ramsay's gonna Retsu Prey his video? That's exactly right, but, um, okay. yeah. No, uh, so I thought that was kind of a neat take on the Let's Play type of thing, so I, I like it. How complicated are the dishes in Cooking Mama? Um, like, do they translate well to real life? They can't. They, yes and no. Um, so the one he made in episode one is curry rice, which is a Japanese kind of thing. Right. And, um, you know, or I'm sorry, curried pork. And we don't really make it the way the Japanese make it. They have, like, a curry roux thing, which are, like, these cubes of curry you throw into a big pot and, like, stir up the ingredients and such, you know? Right. Whereas for us, like, curry is, like, maybe, like, a... I think, like, a powdery spice kind of thing, or it can be, like, a sauce you make out of curry. You know what I mean? So it's kind of... So he, he kind of makes this, like, the Western version then, you know? And then... Oh, so he cheats. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely, yeah. Voting one. <laughs> Moving on. It's probably a wise idea. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's all I got on that one. That's all the only so one. So if you want to watch video games and learn how to cook, <laughs> impractical things... Um, what do you call it? Also, well, did we already talk about Chip and Ironicus's, um... Marriage. Marriage. No, uh... Oh, well, yeah, Ironicus got married, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Congratulations. He did. Yeah. Good for him. I wasn't there. Welcome to the club. He, d he didn't even let me Skype into it. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have let you Skype into it. How am I supposed to virtually catch the garter if I can't Skype into the wedding? I would not have let you into Ironicus' wedding on Skype if I were the bouncer there. The Skype bouncer. The, the bouncer? The wedding bouncer? The Skype wedding. The wedding Skype bouncer, right. Who's not even allowed at the wedding, for the record. But um, So you're the bouncer and nine other people are on the call and you just kind of look intimidating on a video screen chat? I don't even think that. I think basically I'm just more like that switchboard guy when you try to call into a radio show. Okay. You know, that kind of thing. But dressed like a bouncer. Bouncer is maybe a strong term for what I was going for. Um, no, we're running with it. Oh, okay. No, but they're doing the, um, Revengeance, wait, Revengeance, Revengeance. Uh, That's correct. The, yeah, Metal Gear Rising, let's play. And, uh, I'm, you know what's funny? I really thought I would hate Metal Gear Rising, but now watching the Let's Play, I'm like, this game looks pretty fucking awesome, actually. And you haven't gotten out and gotten the game yet? Not yet, no. I, um, I somehow have to go back to 2003 and tell my former self, like, you know, we're actually gonna like Raiden, and then 
get slapped by myself ten years ago. <laughs> you know, because that's that just seems so fucking ridiculous to me. And how many times have you listened to Rules of Nature? Like a million. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's reasonable. You know one thing I can't figure out he does? Um, in the Metal Gear Ray fight at the beginning, I don't know how he does it, but you know the first phase of the fight where uh, Ray kind of tries to hit Raiden with the arm and he blocks it with the sword for the finishing move before he cuts the arm off? Oh, vaguely. But, like, what happens is... So, the, as Chip explains, the game has dynamic music, and the vocal track usually comes in when you're, like, beating the boss pretty well with, like, boss music. Oh, yeah. So, well... It's. I can't tell if Chip did this because this run was perfectly timed, or if the game did it. But it's like so fucking awesome because like he's about to get finish the first fight of the ray, and Chip goes like, "And you know what else this game has? Finishing moves." And right as he says that, the button prompt comes. Raiden blocks his sword. He's about to do the finishing move, and then rules of nature comes in. It's like this perfectly timed thing, and I've watched it over and over. Like I can't tell. Did Chip do that? Is the game doing that? That's like incredible. And it happens a second time for the second phase of the Ray fight, too. He's, like, he's putting all this shit in. He has a really cool rewind effect that took me a while. To, well, I think you actually figured out how he did it. Where, like, he'll play a certain part of a stage one way to show you one way to do it. And then all of a sudden he has, like, a rewind effect with, like, a VHS rewind kind of sound, you know? That, oh, sure. Yeah. And then he'll play the same scene again in a different way. And I'm like, how the fuck... And it's, yeah, it's like, he's using checkpoints, I think, to do it, right? Yeah. No, I couldn't, I, it took me, like, a while, because I'm like, how could he have, and then you're, like, checkpoints, like, oh, yeah, that he's is. He's actually playing a haunted version oh, of that's, Revengeance, yeah. That's how it goes, I see. He's not going to live through that Let's Play. <laughs> I think the one thing about Revengeance is I wouldn't be very good at it. I'll typically kind of, like, um, yeah, brute force. You, you probably wouldn't be. Um, I, I, yeah. No, I brute force my way pretty much through, like, those Devil May Cry style games. Yeah, no, you do have to... Even though the combat mechanics aren't too complicated, you have to get a pretty good sense of them in order to, yeah, you know, do like I had no idea when I was first playing the game that you kind of had to counterattack things. Oh, and like, the tutorial doesn't do a very good job at communicating that to you, right? Like the parry and all that. Yeah, the par or parrying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to parry. Yeah, if you want to uh, beat beat enemies, and so like I think first time you fight like a. a a mech thing, um, what are they called? That I can't remember. Gek geckos? Geckos, geckos. And a couple soldiers at the same time, and I kept dying over and over again, and yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't parry, you're in trouble. No, oh, yeah, so, um, oh yeah, and he like, includes like all little like combat tutorial things and such. Yeah. He's pretty much the best Let's Player out there. Well, no, I should say, he's pretty much like something I could never be. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, sorry. And that's the podcast. That's the podcast. That's my Let's Play career. So you would have him... He could um, mod Danganronpa then, right? <laughs> I would never do that to him. <laughs> God. Um, I actually tried to help that Let's Play uh, yesterday. Oh, um, did you? Yeah, I was going to... Um, I got the next update, and because um, the goon who usually does it, Hello Winter, uh, she had the Phoenix Wright LP going. God, it's like you're one of the in people in Hollywood who get screeners of movies before they go out. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it's like. Getting screener let's plays. Great job. No, but she's on vacation, and he's and the Aaron Ronan's like, I need somebody to subtitle the video, and I'm like, I can do it. And he's like, oh, great, thanks. And I told him later, it's because I will do anything to move this fucking thread along. Um, <laughs> but it, somebody else did it anyway, so. Um, but if you ever, she had a Phoenix Wright LP, I don't know if you ever followed it, Hello Winter. I had heard of it, but I have not followed it. Yeah. Um, before her, it was Mega64, because Phoenix Wright used to be kind of considered the un ble kind of game. Ah, uh, yes. Because there was no great way to do it, because there's a ton of text, which just doesn't translate very well to video, but then there's, like, a ton of music and audio cues, which obviously don't go well with screenshot. Did you ever play the Phoenix? Right. Yes, yeah, right. I did not. I did not, no. You should. They're awesome. I'm, I'm not a portable gamer. They have, like, emulators now. Eh. They, have the, they have the iOS version. I oh. I think and I'm not a, I don't think I'm not 100 percent sure on Android. I know they definitely have iPhone, iPad, um, and they have Ghost Trick too for I, uh, iOS. If you never played that, which is an awesome Capcom game. How much will that run you? Uh, I think Ghost Trick. I think they're each like ten, but you get you get Chapter One free on both. It's like an in-app purchase kind of deal. Looking it up in the Apple Store right now. Um. Yeah. Phoenix Wright, five bucks. Oh, yeah, there you go. Get it, it's awesome. Eh. Um, I haven't played, there's apparently also, um, 
Ace Attorney Investigations, where you play as Edgeworth, the prosecutor, more or less, but that's supposed to be really good. I haven't done that either. And I have a bunch of copies of Professor Layton for the the Professor Layton Phoenix Wright crossover game, which I stopped following news about. I don't even know if that's out or what, but I never played those, so they're still So like... you're really married? <laughs> Portable gaming is basically the only <laughs> way you can do it. <laughs> it's the only way my marriage stays together. <laughs> My wife liked Heavy Rain, for what it's worth. She only saw, like, the first 20 minutes. And that's... She was sold on the first 20 minutes? You have to understand, if you're not a video gamer, Heavy Rain's, like, something you can kind of, like, relate to in a way. Ah, uh, yeah, so I can relate to walking around my house. But you know what I mean? Like, you know, when I'm playing Arkham City, you know, my wife is just not at all interested. You know, I totally she... relate to Arkham City. Well, you do, but if somebody yeah. doesn't give a shit about Batman, I mean, what can you do? Divorce them? Well, yeah. I mean, the lawyer said that's not grounds, actually, but... Um, no, uh, you know what I mean, though. Like, she, you know, if I started playing Metal Gear Rising to her, it's just a bunch of robots cutting shit. Which, it kind of is, actually. Now that's that kind of that. awesome, yeah. though. Uh, <laughs> I, some people don't like robots that Robots cutting of shit? Oh. What can I do? <laughs> What can I do? We have we have very interesting entertainment tastes, but um, robots cutting shit. Where's the dude chopping onions in the kitchen? <laughs> well, that's the previous let's play I was talking about. I want to tell my son about his dead bird. <laughs> I don't want to disembowel robots and pull out their spines to absorb their energy. I forgot. I want to stick fight with my kids. I forgot all about that. Some people, I don't know, they just want to know where the story's going. I don't know. I, I was like, you're going to, when she was like watching, she's like, I want to see more of this. I'm like, you really don't. Like, it gets bad. You may be able to throw a gecko across the area you're in, but can you pee? I'll take heavy rain, thank you. You got any more? <laughs> no, not okay. right now. That's as much of the uh, tutorial as I remember. A couple of people have requested we um, Retsu pray that game. Heavy Rain? All of Heavy Rain, yeah. I'd like to. Um, is it like a single playthrough, about eight to ten hours? Yeah, so what? <laughs> we'll get, we'll get, we did seven hours of Dark Seed 2. Well, and I mean, let's be, point take. Let's be fucking honest. Nothing really happens in that game. It's like, hey, did you talk to everyone in town? I mean, everyone? Twice? You know? But the stuff that does happen okay, well, really then, happens. Yeah, that is that is true. Yeah. Have you played anything else recently? No. That's it. Hotline Miami is my big one. I'm yeah. trying to. I'm trying to 100 percent it right now. I'm like, we're a terrible video games podcast. We don't play anything. <laughs> um, oh, well, I know this dude who played this game. I according to our agenda, we have plenty to talk about. Actually, we do. Yeah, well, I've been playing something recently. <laughs> well, don't keep us in suspense. There's the wind up. Here comes the. Bitch, I've been playing a ROM hack of Final Fantasy VI. Yes! <laughs> yeah! Nice. Fastball strike! Take it! How's, um, well, let me start with why? Well, Final Fantasy VI is one of those games from my childhood that I really liked, but it's also one of those games that I don't think holds up very well. I think it's a difficult game to try to revisit if you're feeling nostalgic. I hear that. I, just don't, I don't think it's all that great. I, I feel similarly. I think, well... You know, it was Final Fantasy three to us growing up. Oh, here we go. And it came on, I know, but you know, it came on the heels of two, which is really four, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah Danganronpa. <laughs> um, the thing I, I, the one thing I just didn't like as much about three as I did, t or six as I did four, whatever, uh, is in four two with Cecil and the Red Wings and all that shit, characters could die and join your party, and it was part of the story, and it kind of helped, I guess, like, the, the, tension, of, or, I don't know, tension, but, like, it helped the story, because you didn't know what was gonna happen next. Six, like, everyone kind of stays with you, with, like, one possible exception, you know? Right, and not only that, but Final Fantasy VI began the trend where everybody could learn everything. So, anybody could equip any Esper, everybody could become, like, they, they kind of, the party members all congeal into this amalgam of sameness let's, when you get to the end game. Let's see how deep into nerdhood I can go. Because if I remember correctly, Final Fantasy V 
starring uh, Bartz or Butts or whatever his name is, had a job system where you could assign each party member whatever job they'd like. Right. And you could level up that job, learn some skills, and switch out the job to something else. So everybody could ostensibly learn everything. Ostensibly, yes, but in 5, you still need to relegate each person to some kind of role. Okay. Like, if you can, you can have people be the same, but it kind of makes the game harder. Okay. Whereas in 6, everybody becomes the same, and that's because, not because they have one set of skills versus another set of skills, it's because they have all of the skills. But they do have a differentiator, if I remember, in 6, right? Where, like, Science got sword tech and, um... Yeah. Well, that's another thing that's... Like, some of the secondary abilities that people have are inherently useless. Like, Cyan and a sword tech, it takes a year to charge up once you learn all of them. Mm -hmm. So there's just no reason to really use him when you have someone else with another set of skills like tools or blitz that you can use immediately, very easily, and that do a lot of damage. Yeah, but didn't, isn't Cyan, like, awesome? No. Oh. I remember... I mean, you, you, his character is neat. Mm -hmm. You could... Some people might say. Sure. But, no, if you want to use this high-level sword text, you have to wait. Like, by the time you get to it, like, each other party member will have had two or three turns worth of uh, their ATB. Wow. And by then you've at least heard that heard that horrible Kefka laugh, like, four times. Oh, yes, that haunting Kefka laugh. <laughs> I actually, I, you know, it's funny because I made fun of him. I did like Kefka as a villain. Um, especially... He had a certain charm about him. And it's kind of neat because you don't really think of him as the villain right away. Yeah. Because it's mostly like Emperor Gestal and stuff, but then Kefka kind of comes to the forefront. Yeah, it's a very Star Warsian kind of thing. Yeah. The one thing I hated, they re-released uh, Final Fantasy VI for the PlayStation, and they added, um, like, CG to it. Yeah, that was pretty dumb. Yeah, because then they made Kefka into, like, literally, like, a cl like the Joker, more or less. Yeah. Which is, like, why? Like, because he doesn't, his sprite didn't really look like that. And it also had random slowdown. So it was easier to play on the SNES than it was on the PlayStation. That's kind of incredible. Yeah. So they, they fucked up something pretty bad. Well, apparently the PlayStation wasn't really great for, like... Gaming. <laughs> Sprite-based gaming, I was going to say. Although now that I think about it. Because you only have so much memory you have to load textures off the CD with, more or less, you know? Because I remember yeah. there was uh, what is it? Marvel vs. Capcom. It was one of those games with the roster where you had two people you could swap out. And if I remember correctly, the PlayStation version, it actually had to load off CD if you want to swap characters. So there was like a wait. Maybe I'm misremembering that. It was like, X, not X-Men vs. I feel like it was one of the Marvel vs. Capcom. Not Marvel vs. Capcom 2, but like, I don't know. Am I just spitballing here? Maybe that doesn't I don't work. know. Let me read Mortal Kombat.exe. Maybe that'll <laughs> All right. on it. Hey, hey, preview. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. It's okay. But anyway, you're playing a ROM hack of 6, you're saying. Yeah, the, it's called Brave New World. And the idea behind the ROM hack enticed me a little bit, and I thought, yeah, I'm kind of in the mood to play Final Fantasy VI, so if I'm going to do it, I'll try it in a different way, see if it works. So uh, what this ROM hack does is it fixes a lot of things that are wrong. Like, first of all, the obvious things like the bugs. You remember in FF6 how Evade just did nothing? How what? Oh, Evade. The evade, evade. Stat, the evade stat was useless. It didn't work. Instead, it was tied into your magic Evade. So if you had that high, it would you'd be impossible to hit, basically. You know, it's funny, I was really bad at RPGs, even though I liked the Final Fantasies growing up, and I would just kind of grind for levels and not really worry about the stats too much. It's like, You're one of those people. Can, huh? I, can I kill that boss yet? No? All right, I'll just kill some imps. Uh, the ROM hack, so what it does is it makes it, kind of like I was saying earlier, where party members have more defined roles, and it does that by having them only be compatible with certain espers. So, like... Sabin, for instance, he can learn a little bit of support magic here and there. Like, each character can only use one, two, maybe three espers max. Did you mean Sabin? I say Sabin. I, I talked about this in a stream I did of the game <laughs> a few days ago. Oh. I, no, I said Sabin, and some people in the chat were still like, S-A-B-E-E-N. I was like, Sabine? That sounds, it sounds dumb. Or Sabin. Like Sabin, I, that, I, that still sounds dumb. I've been there. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, with, I'm Team Sabin. And most of the chat agreed with me. Uh, let's see what it was in Japanese. Twitch TV slash the Beatus. Tune in. Uh, Sabin's Japanese name is... Oh, here we go. No. Here we, yeah, here we go. <laughs> so we'll go to good old FinalFantasy.wiki. Uh, Alright, then... I don't know, who cares? I will suplex you. <laughs> is that left, right, left? I, f I forget. It's X, Y, down, up. 
Japanese name. His name is Mash in the Japanese version. That's even more stupid. <laughs> that really is. I'm glad we could agree on that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Do the monster saving. <laughs> But yeah, the ROM hack's pretty fun. It makes it a little bit more difficult. The enemy AI has been tweaked very heavily. And you know, like I said, party members are more important or have more importance than they may have had before. Uh Cyan, they fixed his sword tech thing. It's called Bushido now. Thank God. Of course, yes. And it charges incredibly fast now, so he's as useful as anyone else in the party could potentially be. So you kind of have to plan out, do you want a heal? if you want a healer, only some people learn the healing spells. If you want offensive magic people, only some people know that stuff. It tweaked the script a little bit. Some fixes are okay, some fixes are dumb. Kefka's dropping a lot more F-bombs in this hack, which I think takes away from the charm of him as a villain a little bit. Oh, they change all the dialogue and such? Uh, a fair bit of it, yeah. So Kefka's cursing? Yeah, he's saying some fucks and some shits here and there a fair bit. That's, a little excessive for my tastes. That's interesting. Uh, why? I don't know. Well, some to be fair, some things didn't translate too well in the original script. Like, some of the dialogue was weird. Or didn't make sense. Or, and apparently a lot of liberties are taken with it. Um, yeah. Because I think, I, I've read about it. that guy Woosley, I think his name was, Ted Woosley. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, but like some things he changed, like just don't exist at all in the original script. It's just like, he just took complete liberty with some stuff, you know? Well, that's, I mean, that gets into that whole, like, translation, localization kind of thing, you know? What would you know about that? <laughs> well, it's funny, because we were going to parlay from ROM hacking, but you know, I, I was involved in a translation ROM hack. Oh, here we go. Yes. Oh, my God. Are we ever going to Let's Play that? Yeah, I, I really want to, maybe even this week, but, I, or this next, week? next week, maybe, because... I'm pretty busy, but, um... Let's double dip. Let's do that while we record the podcast. Okay, sure. Um, no, yeah. Yeah, I'll talk more about it when we actually do the Let's Play, but yeah, so... Take audio from previous Let's Plays we've done and put it over a Police Knots walkthrough. (laughs) Exactly. We can save a lot more time that way. Yeah. So, yeah, for those who don't know, I was the lead programmer on the Police Knots Translation Project, which is Hideo Mm. Kojima's game Mm. before Metal Gear Solid. Never brought here to America. Anyway. Are um, you trying to cast sleep on me, Slow Beef? (laughs) Because it's working. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, all that magical evade versus evade <laughs> stat shit, that was the really hot. <laughs> Heavy rain sucks, let's talk about ROM hack video game stats. That's what the people came to see. Kefka's cursing now, what up? Fuck, now I completely lost my place. Oh, we got some shit for that, too, actually. Um, our, for what? For Police Knots, our translation. Oh, for putting duty stuff? No, kinda. No, um, it was more like, uh, so, whenever you translate shit fan translations from Japanese to English, you have these, like, two extremes where the one, there's these people who say everything has to be very literal and true to the Japanese script to completely capture the author's intent, and then you have normal people who are like, that can't work ever, and shouldn't work that way. Yeah, I remember I tried another ROM hack of FF6. This was longer ago, and that was pretty much what the hacker did, was do a pretty much literal translation of the script, and it was the dullest dialogue that I've ever seen in anything. I I quit very quickly. But you just can't. Like, you know, know, there's just some stuff that does not translate. The phrase lost in translation exists for a reason. And the the thing is, if you ever do watch, like, fan sub stuff, or sometimes, or even, like, fan uh, mangas when they translate them, they have all these, like, they have, like, a translator notes in the middle of it that just tell you, you know, hey, um, this really means this. You can't really translate. You know what I mean? I gotcha. So, yeah. like, an, the big, the easiest example of that is Me- Metal Gear Solid 3. Um, do you remember Volgan, the villain? Of course. Oh, yeah. Do you remember he says, Kuabara, Kuabara? Yeah. So that's... It's his catchphrase. Yeah. It's meaningless in English. You, there's he just, had his own talk show. That's what he would say every time he came out from the curtain. <laughs> that's actually what the name of the show would be. It's Kuabara. <laughs> Welcome back to Kuabara, Kuabara. Welcome back to Kuabara. And then he, like, electrocutes his first guest. <laughs> <laughs> Here we have... Say what you will, but he gets ratings. <laughs> Here we have Ron Paul, but first I want to let you know my body can generate a million volts of electricity. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know why I picked Ron Paul there, by the way. Whatever. Um, that's fine. <laughs> Now let's the political cast. He's no. the go-to talk show guest. <laughs> yeah, Ron Paul is our next three items on the agenda, by the way. This is and he's our guest on the next podcast. <laughs> this is now a libertarian podcast. Now, yeah. um... So, but, all right, so, uh... 
You know what that whole mean that all means, really? Kuabara or what it's supposed to, or uh, yeah, it means gold standard. <laughs> no, um, it's uh, it's what is it? Oh, mulberry bush. Because there's this like old Japanese folk, uh, folklore thing where if you feel like you're about to get struck by lightning, if you say mulberry bush, mulberry bush, like you won't be because it has something to do with some old tale where like a mulberry bush gets struck by lightning. You know, it's like one of those things you just say for luck. Oh, yeah, I do that all the time. Right, but there's no, like, one word or line way of conveying that in English. Uh, unless you just say, have Vulcan say something like, I hope I don't get struck by lightning. You know, like, I... <laughs> <laughs> so... I wish he did say that, though. Right. Like, so, you know, with his character, it's a little menacing that he's taken this kind of kid's phrase and sort of he's this master of electricity, and that kind of makes sense, but there's just nothing you can do in English about it, you know? I mean, and that's a specific case where the translators just opted not to translate it. So you have this Russian guy saying a weird Japanese thing. But, like... But it works in the end. Yeah, but, it, I mean, the rest of the script works, like, better because you do eventually have to, like... You do have to switch things up a little to make it clearer to Western audiences and such. You know what I mean? Right. Right. I mean, it, it can go a little, like... Or Phoenix Wright's another good example because Phoenix Wright, the original game, very clearly takes place in Japan... And the American version, they try to make, or the Western version, I should say, they try to make it take place in California, more or less. And they sort of joke about it. Like, you go to a Japanese village, and they make some kind of, like, joke, like, what's this doing in Cal... You know, if I rem you know what I mean? Arnold Schwarzenegger's there. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly, yes. But, like, um, the one character used to be obsessed with, like, rice balls, and now in the Western version, she's obsessed with hamburgers, you know? Mm. Which is like a just sort of a cosmetic change, and I guess it doesn't necessarily need to be there, except maybe it is. I don't know, weird more or less. I don't know. You know, maybe that is the other extreme, where you say like people just change things needlessly, or you have Woosley who just inserts things for no good at all. But um, we got flack for really crazy things, like things that I would consider to be completely off the wall. Like one character is the daughter of Ed and Catherine in Police Knots. And her name is Anna, and we spelled it A N N A, and it's spelled that in the spelled that way in the promotional materials. But the kana for it is A ah, Na, which somebody, this guy Gemini, who really should have known better, because even I was like, "That's crazy." Said, "Shouldn't that be A N A, like Ana, like anal? Like, what are you talking about? No, Gross. I know it's crazy." But, I don't know, people like seem to like that sort of thing, I guess, where it's like, no, I, I want to know exactly what the original Japanese writer said, and it's like, well, there's really no way to do that unless you go study the fucking language. Like, My daughter, Aina, found this offensive. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I would have if I were Aina. But, or, like, uh, we got in trouble, too, because we switched around two lines, meaning that, and I mean, actually, like, it was first sentence, second sentence, and it was just changed to second sentence, first sentence. You know what I mean? Because it just flowed better in English if you said the, fir the other thing first. You are breaking all the rules. I know! Like, You're the maverick of translating. That's so fucking inaccurate. And then, like, one guy's like, what is this, fan fiction? And it's like, no, what? What are you talking about? But I don't know. Someone comes in and throws the translator rulebook in your face. You're a loose cannon, beef! So basically, I'm never doing another translate pro translation project again. Except for my newest one, Dead of the Brain. Come see of it. <laughs> no, okay. um... But anyway, yeah, I would like to start that Let's Play. So you have to... Yeah, I, I, wrong hacking in general is just kind of an odd thing. Um, I do, I like translation projects because I think they're interesting. Some of the level editor stuff, like Super Mario, like the Super Mario ROM hacks, which we've talked about, you know, it's like, okay, I think if you want to play around with game design and things like that, here's your level editor and engine already done for you. So I, I guess I see that, you know. Then there's stuff like here, I put, I put a dick on Mario's face, which I'm not, I'm not quite sure about, you know, but... That's art. It ex oh, okay, that's, that's art. I see. Actually, the day after I did the first stream of Brave New World, the ROM hacker contacted me the next day. Oh, cool. He sent me a message. I guess it somehow got uh, word got to him about it, and he watched the archive and then sent me a long message about it. A very nice message. Actually, that's an interesting flavor of ROM hack, too, where you take an RPG or a strategy game and you redo it so the rules work better. Yeah, or try to fix things that you perceive weren't done right. Hmm. Or instead of looking back with rose-colored glasses, you look back with analytical glasses. Like, what, what would I... Or maybe it's the approach of what would make this game more fun for me to play if I were releasing it. 
And now that you have the power to do so, and you can share that vision with other people. And I have to give them credit from the technical aspect, because I can tell you just doing Japanese to English is hard enough as well, but when you're just like looking at like save states, which are all just numbers, and trying to figure out what numbers affect the other numbers, in like mathematical formulas compiled into binary, I mean, it's so easy, no wonder everybody like wants to do it. But, um, no, this, it, or that's that one guy, uh, Arkale. Did you ever hear of him? He made Final Fantasy Tactics, I think version 1.3. I've heard of that game, yeah. He uh, he joined the forums, actually, when someone tried to Let's Play it. And it's oh. it's a super hard version of Tactics, but... Um, yeah, I've read a, a synopsis of it, and yeah, it looks insanely difficult. Like, so insanely difficult that I think it would be too much of a barrier for entry, even for, like, somebody who likes Final Fantasy Tactics and wants to try something else, just... Well, apparently he actually toned it down due to the Let's Play on SA. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, oh. There are certain very questionable decisions he made, um... In fact, and I'll even say I think one or well, one of them in particular I thought was a silly, a pretty stupid idea. But um, yeah, having a Ron Paul class, right, right, just doesn't make sense. <laughs> no, but uh, he did like fix a lot of the stuff that's broken. Or, I mean, I didn't. I, I played Tactics in college, but uh, I didn't get super into it. But people who have I really, got really into it. Oh yeah, there's back in the day. Oh yeah, one of my that's probably one of my top three Final Fantasies. Oh wow, two. yeah. What are your other top Final Fantasies? Uh, I don't know if I would put six up there anymore, just looking back on it. Nine, I think, Which might nine? hold oh. up. I haven't gone back and played that one. Nine kind of w went back to form a little bit. Yeah, yeah, Zidane and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very charming game, I thought. I agree, uh, I agree. Yeah. Five, five, is, I like the job system thing, so. I, I never really played five. I played a fan translation of five back in the day for a bit, but I never really got into it. I have Final Fantasy X too, and I was wondering if doing a Let's Play of it would be uh, fun because I think it's a fun combat game, but it is. everything else about it is oh, it's it's crazy fun. The combat, it's just, yeah, it's just everything else everything about the game, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it draws this really severe ire from people that kind of posting that you don't really want to put on yourself to have to deal with or read. Mm. So. I, I think somebody had done it. I want to say maybe Kung Fu Jesus. It was the Tipping 40s guys, wasn't it? Didn't they do that? I think maybe they did. Uh, and I want to say there was an earlier one, too. Like, But um, possibly Tipping 40s did it, yeah, if I remember. Yeah, yeah. actually, now that I'm thinking about it, they did do it. No, 10 had a, it was a ridiculously fun combat system, but yeah. Yeah, I mean... I. What else is there? Uh... What were we talking Other about? Other Final Fantasy games? What yeah. About? Yeah, let's, all right, let's go Final Fantasy real quick. Final Fantasy, well, okay. So, 1, 2, and 3, I did... I, 3, I played the DS remake a little bit, but didn't really care for it. Mm -hmm. Uh, 4, I never finished. I, it's okay, I, I thought. Mm -hmm. I liked 1. Never played 1. Never played 1? Never played 1. It was fun. It was... I liked it because it was, um... It was one of the first RPGs, or really games that I played on Nintendo, where you had, like, changing goals... I mean, you more or less had to light the five, four crystals, but to do so, it's like, okay, you gotta go save this princess, now you gotta go find this witch's crystal, now you, pirates are taking over this town, uh, you know, things like that. So it's like, you always were kind of like, I wonder what I have to do next, you know? Which mm -hmm. sort of led the way for 4, which is R2, which had a story with, like, characters that came in and out of the cast and things like that, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, and I liked that a lot, and then we 6 we talked about... Um, which then, Seven was yeah. released on Steam recently. Seven, I feel like, is the controversial Final Fantasy. Yeah. It's probably, in a way, the peak of the series. In terms of popularity, for sure. Yeah, that's kind of what I mean. It's like, it was yeah. the biggest, is like a huge like title for PlayStation. It was, you know... And I really liked it when I played it back when I was like oh, yeah, I did too. 18, yeah, it was like awesome. Although even then I remember like my friend and I would play, uh, were, got it, played it, and we had seen the commercials, all the hype, we were insanely excited, and the moment that Cloud jumps out of that train, you see his weird blocky Popeye arms. <laughs> even even as young as we were, we were like, really? <laughs> I, I, I kind of forgave. Kind of shitty looking. I forgave that. One thing I never understood is why anyone ever liked Eris. That just completely go goes over my head. I don't get it. Like, it, when she gets killed off, I'm just like, good, like, whatever. Like, <laughs> again, though, I was one of those people, like, I didn't, I just... I get her materia back, right? <laughs> I, I, you see, I didn't even bother with that. I was, I, I don't like healers. I'm like, I have potions for that. Who gives a fuck? You know, um, so... 
Whoa. Hey. I just, Stunning opinions coming out on Retsu Talk. I just want to hit hard. That's... You thought that Police Knots controversy was bad? <laughs> just wait till this gets out. <laughs> no, I, uh... What do you call it? I was... I, I didn't really give a shit about Red 13. I thought he was kind of a weird character. Yeah. Actually, I see what you mean about the whole healing thing, because, you know, her... The only thing that really differentiates the characters are their limit breaks. Right. And and heiresses are all, like, healing and support stuff. But you can only use them when she's been hurt enough to actually use them, and then you can't use it again for a while, so... Yeah. Why do that when you can use other healing stuff whenever you want? Yeah, basically. No. Yeah. I didn't even remember about the limit breaks, so you mentioned them now. Um, no, I, I like most of the characters. It's just, yeah, Eris, I, I, I don't know why everyone made such a big deal about her. Red 13, I thought, was kind of... Um, I liked Kate Sith. Or Ketchy, depending on... Oh, okay, don't do that. No, it's the Gaelic name. Just, just call him Kate Sith. Just but it's, it's Irish, it's not just like... come on, come on, don't be that guy. It's not like... No, okay, no one likes Fine, that. whatever, Kate Sith. Okay. Um, I liked him. I don't even remember who the hell Sir was Barrett. There was Vincent there. Valentine, oh, who was so him. popular, he had his own spin-off How? game that was a big... <laughs> he was like the secret... He was like Boba Fett, but like... Less so. Yeah, I don't get that, he was a completely optional character, he didn't even have to get him, and then he gets his own game. Why? Why is he so popular? Who liked him? He didn't. And there's stuff about him too. People. Was there some period in gamer mentality history where the emo aloof character was everybody's favorite? Because you know the Final what? Fantasy after that, you had Squall, no, no, who no. was the same kind of dude. You already had an emo aloof guy. It was Cloud. Well, Cloud, not he wasn't really that emo and aloof. He was, later in the game. He was until Sephiroth comes in. Because remember before, he, like people are like, "Oh, we're gonna kill the Mako reactor." He's like, "I don't give a shit. I want my money." He's telling what yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to know your names, whatever. And it's like he kind of cares a little, but not really. And then when Sephiroth comes in, he's like, "Oh shit, we gotta do something." And then yeah, then it gets like, almost kind of goofy at times later. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. his character. God, it's funny because thinking back on it, then I'm like, "Why don't?" It's such like a weird story because I don't even remember like certain aspects of it were so confusing and. Yeah, that a lot of it didn't translate very well, or didn't. Lots of things got cut, I guess, from the dialogue. That um, there's a lot of things you just kind of have to know or pay very, very close attention to, or you can easily miss the significance of what happens. Right. That's why I would recommend you read Elintor's. Uh, is that his name? Oh yeah. Elintor is doing a screenshot LP of it. I think I talked about it many, many podcasts ago, but it's still ongoing. Mm-hmm. But he does a very good job at calling out where important things happen, and then kind of helping translate the translation so to help get the meaning across more effectively i'll have to i'll have to take a look at that it's a really good way to re-experience the game without actually having to play it you know what it was too in the west now that i'm thinking about it is final fantasy always seemed to kind of keep topping itself with whether you can talk about our one two three seven which is really Uh one four six seven whatever um but like they were always kind of leaps and bounds above each other you know obviously one to Four, you had the SNES to the Nintendo to Super Nintendo transition, and you had, like I said, story cha- characters changing rather than just goals. And then six had kind of like a bigger story. Um, it was a little grander in scale. There's like a yeah, whole it was set- much more ambitious. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, in, in terms of what actually happens, too, very unprecedented things for a JRPG. Yeah, and it, it, it kind of drops Final Fantasy, sort of like. Here's your four, eight, whatever crystals that you have to collect. Now it's just right. like its own kind of thing. And then seven, you have graphically, you have the upgrade to 3D. It's on top of like computer generated movies. It's it's bigger. It's got this soundtrack, you know. I Keeps mean, the active time battle thing going on, but really changes the combat mechanics a lot. It's a good yeah, thing. yeah. And eight's the first one where you, where it was like, it's better, but not leaps and bounds better. Uh, maybe. I did like how in 8, leveling was a little discouraged, almost. Mm-hmm. Since enemies would just be whatever level that you were. Right. In any area. So grinding wasn't as much of a way to cheat, I guess. Yeah. For lack I, of a better word. I hear that. But then you had that card game that... I, I didn't I, care for that card game. I like Triple Triad. You like the random rule? Don't let that rule infect your world. I don't really forget. I don't really remember the random rule. It's, it's, well, it's, it's random. Oh. Okay. So, uh, yeah. let's see here. Eight. The story in eight, I didn't really care for at all. Um, eight is where it tried to get the whole, like, you had little hints of love stories happening in, you know, seven, you had the relationship with Cloud Eris, then Cloud Tifa, there were some undertones there. In six, you had Locke and Celeste, they had kind of a 
thing going on, but it was very subtle and very much in the background. Right. And then eight, they're like, we need a love story now. Right. Well, I think I think ten. And everyone has amnesia, and it makes no sense. Oh yeah, and they all knew each other and forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's kind of stupid. I hate that plot twist in general. I mean, yeah, well, it's pretty lazy. Right, right. Yeah. It's odd. Yeah, it was just it was. Yeah, I, yeah, I didn't like it. Now that I'm thinking back on it too much. <laughs> it, it, it had better graphics. I think the combat system was. It was just ATB, right? But you had the whole guardian thing. Yeah, it was ATB. But then instead of like learning magic a traditional way, you it would come and go mm-hmm. depending on what you had, or not come and go, but you would um, instead of having MP, you had amounts of it. Okay. Because you would draw it from people. Yeah. And then depending on the quantity of the magic that you have, if you tie it to a stat, that stat goes up. Yeah. Whatever. Who gives a shit? Then you had yeah. nine. I like the system in 8, just going back to that real quick, no, just yeah, because course, yeah. it's really, really exploitable, and there are some crazy things you can get insanely overpowered, like, at the very, very beginning of the game, mm-hmm. which is pretty neat that you can do that. Right. So yeah, 9 was a return to form in a lot of ways, kind of kind of like drawing back from what made 4 good, I think. I never really finished it, not for any good reason. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't even get that far in it, honestly, but it, it seems... The story in 9 I have the most trouble remembering. I don't like that the character had a tail. Yeah, that was... He was... If I remember from what I played of it, he was part of, like, a pirate's thing with an airship. And right. they were going to go kidnap a princess, and she had that big, cartoony, purple queen mother. The queen. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I think as far as I got, Steiner, the night guy, mm-hmm. was chasing after you, but is on your airship. I, I don't... So you didn't get very far, then. No, not at all. Yeah. And I'm thinking back on it. Oh! And the forest people turn to stone? Something like that. And then yeah. the bad guy is another dude with a tail. Oh, I, didn't, I don't remember that at all. So nine sucked. Something no. about clones, <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, that sounds awful. Oh, yeah. no, that's right. Um, What's his face? The wizard. Uh, Vivi. The black knight. V, v was cool. Yeah. I was down with Vivi. Because he looked like a Final Fantasy I black wizard guy. With the yeah. hat and all. Wow, this is a nerdy <laughs> fucking podcast, dude. Yeah, return to form. <laughs> um... Yes, it was. Ten, ten I did like, if I remember. I did yeah. finish that. You know, you're right, this is nerdy. Let's go back to talking about ROM hack translations. I was just... Oh, okay, yeah. Let's get back to the cool kid talk. Yeah, no, that was cause that was a completely serious thing I just said. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, uh, ten... I like ten. Uh, ten... Ten is where I think the old battle systems kind of show their age a lot more. You know, it was kind of funny. I said, I like ten, and then I thought, what about Blitzball? And I'm like, oh, Well, yeah. okay... Um, and the plot was, I think, one of the weaker ones. Well... And the bar isn't even that high, because it's Final Fantasy games, but the plot was just like... Eh. I... Okay. It's, you know what I kind of liked and then hated? Um, yeah. So you have uh, Jekt and uh, Titus, right? That sure. whole relationship where he hates his father. Of course. The end of the game, I really thought this was well done at first, where you have to fight him because he's really sin and all that shit. And he's he's trying to like talk and joke with you. Like the father is like, like you're like you've gotten big, and he's like, well, I am sin. And he's like, that's not funny. And it's like this awkward kind of moment. He's like, yeah, I know. And it, it was kind of like awesome because you have this notion of this guy who really hates his like dad and stuff, and they're gonna he has to kill him. And then just as everybody goes, Dad, I hate you and stuff. He goes, I know. And it's like really awkward and kind of like real like there you know how usually with games like that they have to have some big redeeming moment where it's like no i loved you all along or i really wanted to it's yeah. almost like you have this guy who's like yeah i really did kind of fuck up as a parent you know it's like wow that's really interesting <laughs> and then of course at the end when you kill him Tyus like wait no and reaches over and you're like no you just undid everything fuck you final fantasy 10 <laughs> you know so of course and then final fantasy 10 too pretty much undoes all that by letting you just bring back Titus at the end. I Oh, spoilers. Hey, no, I'm kidding. Hey, no. It's, it's so ridiculous. Is that supposed to be a spoiler? Because it's so fucking clearly him at the beginning, where it's like a shadow with the same voice actor. that looks the same clothes. Just, just looks just fucking like him, and it's like, <laughs> hmm, wonder where they're going with this one. I never played yeah. Eleven. And they could never say his name because he was the only person. It was the first voice acted Final Fantasy game, and you could oh. you could rename you could rename Titus, but oh, no one else. That's so right. no one would ever yeah. actually say his name. So in Ten Two, you know, was always just like, could that be him? Oh Jesus! What? All right, stupid. <laughs> but I did like the battle system of Ten a lot. I like the leveling up system, the sphere grid. 
Yeah, that was well done. The whole combat thing I liked a lot. Same. Blitz, Blitzball we didn't need. Yeah. I had a friend who was obsessed with Blitzball. Like, he loved it. And I have no idea why, but he, like, grinded his Blitzball team to, like, nine, level 9 billion. <laughs> and would just destroy everything. And was just like, what are you... What, you don't get any... Like, I, this was well after he got Waka's weapon, which is the only reason you play Blitzball. Yeah, that's that's why I played it. I did. Because I remember grinding it at one point, and I was like, why did... And then I'm like, yeah, that's right, Waka. Yeah, but he went above and beyond. <laughs> Not a big Waka fan, either. Hey, intense... You don't like Bender? <laughs> you don't like John DiMaggio? Oh, that's him? Yeah. I didn't realize. Same guy. Did you ever, um... Oh, what was it? Do you ever figure out between 10 and 10 2 what happened to Lulu and who this new pain person is who's kind of like her but not really? Well, Lulu got knocked up, I think, by Waka. Uh-huh. Waka Waka! And, um... I, I don't know who pain is. Okay. That sounds like, yeah. But with her name like that, you know she kicks ass. <laughs> I was just remembering, Lulu wore a really low-cut fur coat, right? Yes. What the fuck is up with that? It's typical black mage garb. Oh, okay. You I, know what Vivi wore was in fashion for a while, and then what Lulu brought I, a new thing. I need two-thirds of my body really fucking warm in this tropical climate. It's how you concentrate your magical aura. Oh, okay. I didn't Duh. understand. Fur coat. What a jerk. So then after that was Eleven, which was an MMO. I never played it. Really bad. I've heard that. I had a friend who played it. He was obsessed with all the Final Fantasies and I I no. <laughs> Do you ever no. um, hear of uh, Pandemonium Warden, that whole thing? With Eleven? That sounds like something I've heard of. It's like uh they made this boss that's apparently so fucking hard to kill, like these People planned a raid on it, and I think they stayed up, like, 36 to 48 hours trying it before, like, one guy felt like he was going to pass out, and they're like, we have to give up. And, they, and that whole time was spent fighting the boss? Yeah. Wow. They, like, drafted up this whole essay, like, this is, like, a problem in your game if we can't <laughs> kill this boss after 48 hours. But, because, like, apparently, um, and then kind of reading it, first you're, you're kind of like, who the fuck stays up two days fighting a boss? And then you start reading the essay, and you're like, wait, this, why did they do this? Like... This apparently it's got a chance to completely heal itself, like every like, I don't know, like hour or so. Like it can oh. kind of just undo everything you've done just out of nowhere at times. It like keeps spawning like really high level bosses as guardian kind of enemies, you know. And they're like, they're just like, this is not possible to do, you know. And I heard, I heard like a year later or so, like Square finally like nerfed it or whatever, but. Just in time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. thank God. We were all asking for that. <laughs> Finally. I'm going to renew my subscription. But um, if I remember, too, Eleven took place in some world that they used for Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. Ivalice. That was 12. Or maybe Eleven did that also. Oh, wait, maybe you're right. I don't know. 12, uh, I did play a little at 12. That's the weird system where you had, like, the Donnie Darko things, except they came out of its head and pointed to the enemy. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> right. Heavily inspired by Donnie Darko. Right, yes. Uh, I kind of remember 12. I, played, I did not finish 12. Me neither. I think I only played a little bit of it. Yeah. It was okay. I don't know. 13, I've heard mixed things. I did not play 13. Neither I've did heard I. heard mostly bad things. Yeah. I've heard, like, the tutorial lasts, like, 20 hours or some weird shit like that. Great. Yeah, and then... Sold. <laughs> well, apparently 13 was popular enough that it spawned a 13-2, or a 13 versus. Yeah, and then they're coming out with Lightning Returns, which is like 13-3, I suppose. Yeah. So apparently the game was a massive success. Oh, did you hear about the new the controversy of Lightning Returns? Uh, what's the controversy? <laughs> so they had an interview, and they're like, what new changes are there? And apparently the, the head game designer guys were like, well, we made Lightning's boobs bigger. She's up to a D-cup now. And she, he actually says something like, we've added jiggle physics. You can best see it if you put the camera like this, use a small shield, and it's These back. are the developers? Yes. Just talking about this? Yes, in an interview, the actual developers. And then they go after the jiggle part. They go, so look forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, all right. We've been grinding for quite a while. <laughs> Lightning strikes twice. Uh <laughs> oh, my God. That's, so that's ridiculous. Wow, okay. 
We want to take a page from the Dead or Alive series, because that's been going really well. We know what our Final Fantasy fans want. <laughs> You've always come for Final Fantasy as part of the softcore porno aspect of it. So we're having Lightning wear Lulu's clothing. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, I guess there is a little precedent there, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's the new controversy. I mean, for me, I don't care, because I'm never going to play it, and... Nothing outside yeah, right. of my world space matter. No, I'm kidding. But um, <laughs> but I will translate it. Oh yeah, no, totally. Yeah. Fourteen, I think, is going to be another MMO too, right? Yeah, I think they've already announced fifteen. Oh, good. I don't care anymore. I used to love the Final Fantasy games. Now I just, I'm just kind of, eh. yeah. I'll, I'll like watch with passing interest, but I haven't seen one that I'm like, I should really get that, you know. No, none of the new ones are doing it. For me. I wonder, maybe you just, do you think you just grow out of RPGs? Yeah, yeah, I was about to say, maybe it's just JRPGs just falling out of favor with me. Yeah, I just, and also like... For the, games I can just kind of like pick up and play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the concept of something, it's like, um, you need to spend like, I don't know, a half hour preparing for a half hour of gameplay kind of thing. I don't right, know. Right, yeah. And I know the later games got a little better with where it's more like strategy and your builds and shit like that, but it's, I don't know. I, I feel like, too, it's like a, 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 a typical JRPG is like 20, 40 hours, maybe 40 hours even. About 40, yeah. It, yeah, it's like, that is such a fucking time sink now. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. We live in a busy world. That's the thing. Yeah. I, I never really got into, like, Western RPGs, you know, at like all. Like the Fallouts? Oh, Fallout I liked a lot. I did play a lot of Fallout 1. 2 I played a little, and I didn't have it, so whatever. Mm. But I liked Fallout a ton. In fact, I, I tried Fallout 3, but it's just one of those things that I talked about before. It's just, like, too open-ended for me. I like 3 a lot, um, except I fucked up the beginning, and I want to play it again, but then I never got back into it. And I have New Vegas yep. wrapped still. New Vegas was $2.50 during the Steam sale, but I didn't pick it up. Oh, I, I have it for Xbox or whatever, yeah. but... Yeah, it sucks, because there's one part, apparently, from people I've talked about Fallout 3 that everybody kind of messes up. Where, um, you know Megaton? The town with the nuclear bomb? Uh, yeah. Do you remember there's a guy who asks you, you can, like, do a, op like a quest where it's you can blow up Megaton? But, or you can go tell the sheriff about him? Didn't get that far. Oh, forget it then. That's, that's like, that's like at the beginning! I, I barely got out of the vault before I was like, eh, this is, I don't like this. You were just soothed to sleep by Liam Neeson's fatherly voice? Yeah, I was. Well, I don't blame you. And then he fought wolves. Uh, that's the gray, sorry. Oh. Yeah. What is the gray? Some Liam Neeson movie. Oh. I only know him from Batman Begins. Your Fallout character has a certain set of skills. <laughs> wow, we really got derailed on Final Fantasy chat, didn't we? Yeah. We, uh... At least we'll never have to talk about that again. <laughs> Can I bring up one thing, because I know we're starting to get close to the hour mark? Go for it. Um, a while back on Facebook, I had, uh, mentioned a thing about, they called, I guess, people called Guess Who Talk or whatever, right? Or I had talked to, like, three people who were just random fans of ours. Um, and it was all, uh, really cool. I ended up losing the audio from, or my audio from it, which is just stupid of me, because I fucked things up. But I, I really want to talk to the same three people I talked to again. And maybe as, like, just tried and true, just, like, come on the yeah. podcast with us. Because, espe like, especially the first guy, um, this guy Gamma, uh... Uh, is that the one you talked a lot of game design chat about? Yeah, he um, he's from Portugal, and he has he actually has his own gaming podcast there. Because I expected oh. to talk to him for like ten minutes, and we ended up like talking for like half hour, thirty five minutes, you know. And uh, I feel bad because like the other guy, Black Hawk Omega, um, I plugged his brother's channel, and then lost the audio. So he's probably like, "Hey, Ritz, you play plugged your channel," and then, "Oh, hey, I thought they now did. his channel's it's been canceled." <laughs> And, and and actually, he was uh, taken out and back and murdered by uh, YouTube executives. No, but, uh, so that, yeah, and, um, uh, Clock, I don't know if, uh, what... Clock? Well, I don't, uh, this, this person who's, um, tribute fan art to us and stuff, too, I don't know. I don't know what her stance on having her name publicized is kind of thing, so I'm just going by her, uh, the username she gave me. Clock. Sure, but, um... Mm -hmm. We talked a bit about Cyber Dream stuff. So anyway, I'd like to do that again at some point uh, soon. So I haven't forgotten. I just fucked up the audio. And... So what do people do? Tweet at you? Sure. Yeah. Or, or, or uh, contact me on Skype again. Either Visit way. your new house? Visit my, just come over. Yeah. Say hi. Come to my basement, a.k.a. studio. Oh, my God. What else we got? Do you want to pad out? 
in the last three minutes with? Well, uh, trying to think about the timing of this. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll have posted my Monday video. Okay, uh, so... Well, I guess I'll just go ahead and say it. We're trying to get back into noir. Yeah, yeah, we'll have posted Tuesday by then, yep. Yeah, oh yeah, that'll go up Tuesday. The video version of this will go up Wednesday. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Scheduling is complicated. Mm-hmm. And, uh... Yeah. Yeah. I have to thank Lotax again for helping me out with my audio on the Monday video. The, ho the House of Horrors video. He's, he's really getting into Let's Play now. Apparently so. <laughs> yeah. He's like... He's, a... he's been experimenting with uh, scare cam things. Yeah. He's actually pulling it off well. Yeah. Because it's parody stuff. Well, yeah. I mean... Well, the best is to... And it's just proving how stupid fucking some people are on YouTube. Oh, yeah, um, people took it seriously. And they, oh, yeah, he put up a video where he put the comments for people who were like, I think he might be faking it, guys. He put up two videos. Two oh, separate two. videos. Because <laughs> the one video is Minecraft 3D. It's obviously some game maker or some Unity or some kind of kit some guy made. It's, it's nothing like Minecraft because Minecraft's not easy to make or whatever. Relatively. The, and, and people, he's like playing it, and it's obviously not Minecraft, and everyone's like, that's not Minecraft. Like, no shit, <laughs> it's not Minecraft. You should be ashamed. What a fucking jerk. And then the one where he's obviously pretending to be scared, the horror game. The scare cam one. And people um, are like, it's not actually that scary. You're, you're faking it. Like, yes! No fucking shit, he's faking it, you fool. What's the matter with you? I played this, and I don't see what the big deal is. <laughs> so fucking stupid. I just hate the internet. But that said, please like and subscribe. <laughs> that said, <laughs> here's some plugs for our internet things. <laughs> you fucking nerds. Anyway, Final Fantasy Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Which I rom hacked <laughs> while watching a cooking mama let's play. And there we have it. Are we done? I think so. All right. Oh, uh, let's plug our stuff. Oh. So, I'm on Twitter, at the Beatus, the underscore Beatus. I'm on Twitch, the underscore Beatus. You waited 26 episodes to do that? Uh, you're, I think the idea is you're supposed to repeat your plugs. Oh, okay. Good. Every time. Oh, I see. All right, then. So you sure. force people to follow you. Okay. I, I'm at Slow Beef. Starting a Police Knots Let's Play soon. I'm sure you'll see it on something awful. No, know. you won't. Well, that's not going to happen. All right. Okay. Sayonara.